everybody, uh, I said Vecna was a big, stupid, stinky nerd, and the GM wanted to fist fight me over it. And then he cut my hand off and sacrificed it to Vecna. So, uh, we're coming to you from the hospital. Uh, what's up, though? Sessions cancels back. Yeah, I, I'm gonna be real. I didn't think Matt had it in him. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he, he really, he, something must have happened to him at work because he just. He, the, the crazy thing is he just stopped talking. He just like, yeah, just got up and then it was a flash of white and then. And he had a bone saw are. for some reason. Oh, God. Bone <laughs> saw, brother. <laughs> bone saw is ready. Uh, yep. Yep. Welcome back. Um, we're living free, dying fast here on this one. We just uh, things are happening. We're talking words. Everybody, the wheel get of fate is turning. Ready. I was gonna make some sort of joke about, as you can see by the title, but I don't know what it's gonna be. Who who knows? <laughs> this is very. We're off to a great start. Yeah, no. The- <laughs> I can't wait for this to be an hour of just scuff. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um. Yeah, no, I don't have a segue out of that. Anyway, uh, yeah, we, 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 what are we talking about? We're talking about, well, actually, before we talk about that, everybody hit pause after that absolutely fabulous, high quality, production quality, Howard Stern, eat your art heart out. Damn, I fucked that up, too. <laughs> after that amazing intro, you should definitely hit follow or subscribe on whatever platform you're currently listening on, because obviously we know what we're doing. Clearly. We're so good at our jobs, guys. The job implies we get paid. True. We do not. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Any stupid tangent you want to go down real quick just for funds before we. Do you really want me to go on another 20 minute rant about Gundam Seed? Because I will. No, no, I don't want you. <laughs> That's not what that. No, that was not. You said. Invitation. No, 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 no. Pause. No, no, you no, said no, no. Any <laughs> random tangent. That does. That means TTRPG random or tangent. my by spurgaliciousness of the month, which is Gundam Seed at the moment. <laughs> random tangent does not mean... Random tangent and 20-minute rant are not the same thing. Alright, fine. Here's a random tangent. Uh, Flay from Gundam Seed is the best version of Gaslight Gatekeep Girl Boss I have ever seen in my life. She does it like... She lies as she breathes. It's actually fascinating to watch. Okay. Did you get that's it? Out? That's my random. Yeah, I was gonna say, did you get it out now? You you good? You you brought up Gundam at least once. I did. I did. Also, Duo Maxwell's theme is awesome, but so edgy. <laughs> okay. Return I don't, to the smell I, of blood and gunpowder. I, <laughs> the name is very good. It sounds like a Guilty Gear song, to be honest. It it does. I was thinking that. <laughs> or was it the the boy who killed his adolescence or something? <laughs> yeah. Um. I don't have any current hyperfixation to go on a tangent about other than uh, 14 has its you know claws back in my soul, but that's not new. Anyway. I mean, you can, we can, I don't know, welcome to the bread bank. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the 14 bank. We got bread on deck. We got bread on the floor. Uh, <laughs> Roasted, toasted. Now I want to make a remix of that entire video, but 14 theme. <laughs> who okay wait who would be who would be the bread bank guy though the manager thanos no 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 no, no. who who's papyrus in this situation oh papyrus mm. who's papyrus i feel like it's it's got to be ali say right <laughs> i think it is ali say yeah <laughs> yeah that's probably yeah, it's, it's that's ali say and, and alpha knows behind the counter yes exactly and then I the kind man- of want the manager to be either um, Emmett think- Selk or. or um, <laughs> I was thinking the manager or, would be Ishtola. Um, Estinian. Oh, could Ishtola, be. Oh, Ishtola would be good too. <laughs> Estinian works. Yeah, I, see, I can see. Uh, uh, I can see Ishtola doing the "What the fuck do you yeah. want?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I do like Emmett Selk though. <laughs> Dude, I need to see this on my desk by Monday uh, morning. Yeah, I do. I want this. Now that I've put this in my brain, I want this. Also, they're not buying bread. They're buying, like, I don't know, fucking white or sight. <laughs> yeah. Some shit. I don't know. Uh, anyone who just doesn't play 14 is like, what the fuck are you guys on about? Uh, 
Don't worry about it. All right. Just go play 14. Anyway. You should watch that bread bank video by Moonshine Animations, though. It is a comic true, gold. True. Everybody should watch that bread bank video because it's fucking hilarious. Anyway. So I could do this. I can bring us back. I got this. <laughs> I swear I got this. <laughs> you got it, Hercules. <laughs> what are we actually talking about? Um, so we have just recently, and by just recently, I mean we've had one session, but uh, we started up a new campaign, and we're playing through Vecna Eve of Ruin, uh, which, for those who don't keep up, and I don't blame you these days, because Watsy can go suck a fat dong sometimes, um... Uh, Vecna Eve of Ruin is the most recent adventure module that Wizard of the Coast has released for D&D 5e. Because what other edition would it be? Imagine they're like, we're making a third edition module. <laughs> Just randomly. Um, that would be... I would see. I would respect the memes, though. Like, I would, I would be like, we're bringing it back to 3.5, baby. And everyone's just like, what the... Fuck? <laughs> but no, like, then you get the grognards who are like, yes! <laughs> you definitely would get that for sure, yeah. Uh, anyway, yes, Vecna Eve of Ruin is the newest adventure module for the old 5Es, and we are about to do, or we've done one session, and we are getting a campaign rolling in it. Granted, it's only been one session, so we could crash and burn in the next two weeks, because that's how it goes sometimes with campaigns, but I think we'll be okay. Uh, and for those who do not know, Vecna Eve of Ruin is... As far as I'm aware, the only official 5e adventure module that does this, uh, but it starts the adventure at level 10. As far as I'm aware, every other adventure module starts at either level one or level three, and those are the only two variations I think I've heard of. I don't know if if you know of otherwise, right? I think no, that's I it. don't. Not at all. Right. Yeah. OK. Um, obviously unofficial like third party stuff completely different story but in terms of official adventure modules Vecna Eva Ruin starts at level 10 which is very much out of the norm for Wizards of the Coast adventure modules because WotC much like the rest of us I think is aware that their game kind of breaks uh, you know post like level 12 to 15 range so they've sort of avoided the problem by just not making any adventures at that level <laughs> mm-hmm but Vecna Eve of Ruin, they were like, let's do it. So you start at level 10. So I just want to talk and discuss about the idea of starting a game or starting a camp, a whole campaign, not just like a one shot or a little mini, like doing a whole campaign starting at higher level and sort of what, what you should do with that. How should you go about it? Is it a good idea or a bad idea? Both is, as you might imagine, is the answer to that question. Um, mm -hmm. Out of curiosity, have you ever started a game at higher level? And I don't mean just D&D. &D, I mean, like anything. Any system that mm. think of. Jumped in kind of midway. No, I can't say I have personally. Um, like you said, not counting like one shots, because obviously we've done a ass load mm -hmm. of those, but like a full on game now. Yeah. Um, I feel like. I feel like I have somewhere down the road, but I don't particularly remember. So whatever. Um, before we really get into the down and dirty of it, I, I would like to point out we're going to be referencing D and D, you know, primarily here because a it's a D and D adventure module that we're referring to. B the idea of starting at higher level is sort of a D, very D and D esque thing. Um, but starting at higher level is kind of just a proxy term for saying that you know really what it is is starting a campaign with mate with player characters who have already done important things and are already important characters. And that is a system agnostic concept. That's not like a D and D only thing. You know, we use the term uh, levels because 
you know, well, A, because D&D is the king of the industry, so we always refer to things in D&D vocabulary. Um, but also because the idea of levels is a really easy way to quantify how far along a character is. It's just an easy reference number. But really, you know, there's a lot of games that don't use levels. Uh, off the top of my head, Cyberpunk Red, Shadowrun, um, Apocalypse World, Take a Shot. Um, I don't know what else off the top of my head doesn't use levels. I can think of Star Wars Fantasy Flight. So there's plenty of game systems that do not use levels. So level is really just a sort of... Uh, like a proxy. What's the word I'm looking for? It's a good stand in word. Um, but really, the point is you have characters who are starting the game in a position where they are more important. They're more influential. They've done stuff that is relevant already in the world. Uh, Vecna, Vecna Eve of Ruin starts the player characters at level 10. So in terms of, so in like D&D terminology, level 10 is like you've already saved a town from like a scare, you know, like a, a big monster or whatever, right? Like uh, what's the kind of shit you might be fighting around at that CR range? I'm, I'm blanking. An adult dragon. Is an adult dragon that now, wait, what CR is an adult dragon? Like CR 15? Uh, maybe. Yeah, it's it's 17. Um, so, yeah, you could have maybe, yeah, you saved the town from a dragon or a, or a young dragon even. Or, you know, you fought off, I don't know, a couple of mind flayers. And when I say a couple, I mean, like, you know, two. Um you fought in some more notable things in in D and D terminology, and people might know your name in a local area and stuff. So, Vecna Eva Ruin is like, yes, you're somewhat relevant local heroes right off the bat. Um, so how do you deal with that? How do you start that? What what should you do? What's the best way to go about it? And does Vecna Eva Ruin do any of these things? Um, should we start with the module? I don't know. Should we go to module then? Or other way around, do you think? Um, yeah, I say we start the module first. Fair enough. So, I... I don't know what I was expecting, I guess. I do feel a little... I'm a little disappointed with how Vecna Eva Ruin opens up because it's like the adventure says, oh, you're level 10 characters. So you're you're already somewhat heroes. You're more relevant than, you know, a level one dirt farmer. But the opening scenario feels exactly the same as it would be even if you were a level one dirt farmer. Like there's no... It doesn't feel more epic or cool, really. True, you do just... It, it, the only thing that really changes is the scale of the thing, right? It's like, rather than getting a mission from, you know, uh, the town's guard, you're getting it from the king himself, but it's still like a, hey, go do this thing. Yeah. You walk in, so... The opening of the adventure is you're in the city of Neverwinter and you're talking to Lord Daggett Never Ember. You're in the city of Neverwinter... You're talking to Lord Daggett Never Ember. A lot of never going on in that city. Um, what was the crypt called? Never Dead? Yeah, yeah, Never Death, yeah. Yeah, Never Death, something like that. Um, so yeah, it's like, you walk in, you talk to Lord Never Ember, and he gives you this mission to go find some nobles who have been kidnapped. Which is not really any different than, like, the local town guard tells you to go save some children from a goblin. Like, that's basically the same setup. And right off the bat, I was like, okay, well, that's a little disappointing. Like, I get that you're saving characters who are more important, but the setup doesn't feel any different. 
And I was, I don't know about you, I was a little disappointed with that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of expected us, like, I, I obviously Matt explained it, but I had expected us to already be doing weird multiverse nonsense. Yeah. Like, be, you know, maybe not on a Spelljammer, but like, you know, be in like one of the weird kind of hub islands that Spelljammers hang out on. Yeah. Honestly, Vecna Evil yeah. Ruin probably should have just been a spell, like a Spelljammer game or a plane shift game. I don't know about that, but yeah, it doesn't start. Yeah, it doesn't start in any kind of more exciting or, or weird situation. It's a pretty standard 5e setup, and I would have liked them to take the time to have considered something a little more appropriate to like level 10 characters. Um, so that's. Yeah, I don't know. That's like, it's not like it doesn't ruin it or anything, but it is one of those things where you're like, huh, OK. Uh, and then also the other thing that was, that's kind of funny is. So the setup is like. Is literally just you're talking to Lord Never Ember. And it was so like vague and open ended that Matt also added in the fact that, oh, you guys have been hired by the Harpers. And then he threw in Edgin from the movie as like a little tie in thing because he works for the Harbors. But like that wasn't the adventure doesn't tell him to do that. Matt just decided to do that to make the uh, opening feel a little bit more impactful. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's like even from the very beginning of session one, Matt's already like trying to do this extra effort to make this shit work. <laughs> Which I just think is very funny. It's like, yeah, uh, it just it seems like an unfortunate fact. You're just going to have to do this crap homework for any like more normal than more homework, norm work, norm work, more homework than is reasonably expected. More homework than maybe should be there. Yeah, but yeah. also, you know, we've only played one session, so it could get drastically better. I don't we don't know, although I have that's the Internet has not told me that that's for sure. Uh, so we'll see. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm sure Matt will make it work, but uh, he's going to make it work from, you know, his own pocket, as it were, rather than the uh, adventure itself doing it for him. Yeah. I mean, I, it, one thing I, I can expect Matt to be like, I'll fix it. Yeah. I'm not going to like it. <laughs> yeah. He's going to fix it and complain about fixing it is, is basically what it'll come down to. Um, so, yeah. I mean, so let's both of us agree that's not a great way to start. So let's just tease out a little bit. Like, what's the problem there? So, for, so it's, you know, for me, problem number one is it just doesn't feel like the characters are any more special than level one characters. Like, yeah, you're talking to a slightly more relevant. Uh, not even you are talking to a more relevant NPC. But the thing the NPC is telling you to do and the general setup of the quest does not feel any different than a general level one quest. So mm -hmm. that's goofy. Not a fan of that one. Uh, and you just show up and he's like, hey, could you go grass you some nobles for us? And it doesn't establish the characters as relevant heroes in any way and the adventure gives you a couple of like background suggestions but the actual gameplay of the adventure doesn't go out of its way to establish your characters as more relevant in any particular way like it doesn't say you came from this mission that you just finished where you did X, Y, and Z, or you're at this noble party because you're being recognized for your heroism and X, Y, and Z characters are, you know, uh, giving a speech in your name or like, it, it, there's nothing that makes you feel any more special, but your characters are level 10. So unless they've been sitting around farming goblins out in the woods to get to level 10, they should be somewhat more special. <laughs> right presumably mm -hmm. they have to have done something uh and then the other thing is it's just kind of a boring setup for level 10 characters right like yeah i mean i would have expected us to be like 
doing something a little crazy. You know, oh, go do this thing. Time is of the essence. Like, mm -hmm. not like, hey, explore a graveyard for us. It's like, go to the spooky graveyard. Yeah, or 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 make it like, or even even the premise of go rescue these nobles. Why is it not? Hey. The graveyard is being, like, infected by an undead ritual that's about to, like, go off and summon crazy demons and shit. We need you to go there right now and deal with this problem immediately. Like, there's a crazy undead magic ritual, you know? It's like, eh, go rescue some nobles. And you're like, you could have done more there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you could have you could have easily had it where the 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 city guard have have uh, quarantined off the graveyard and are standing on the outskirts trying to fight back all of the undead that are trying to crawl their way out of the graveyard. We need you to go into the center to stop this ritual that's causing like infinite zombie spawns. You know, like <laughs> something yeah, along cool. those lines. So, yeah, overall, a little bit of a disappointing setup scenario. So how do we make this better? That's really the meat and potatoes. So how, you know, how should you start a level 10 game? So for me, I mean, I, I've said this a million times. You should always start your games in media res. I think if you're going to start a high level campaign, this is doubly true, like even more true than it would be if you're, you know, Level one adventurers, you can kind of be like, well, they're hanging out in the tavern because they're not super important. They don't have anything to do. So things are quiet right now. OK, fine. Level 10 characters. Which is to say, you know, if you translate this to any other system, characters who are midway through their career as an adventuring PC. They have already done stuff. They're important. They're up to something. They're doing things. They you should start session one of they're in the middle of a big job, you know, just immediately sell the point. So a perfect example is the black company books because the black company books, the characters are more or less, they are kind of in the realm of like level 10 PCs. Like they're kind of in that zone in terms of like power level and importance. And the opening of that book series is they're on a mission in a city and they are sieging the city for their uh their for the person who hired them and they're like moving through the streets taking over spots like you know holding down civilians like capturing people like they are doing shit immediately and they're doing like important army you know uh not not maneuvers what's the word i'm looking for army like operations basically can't think of what the word I want to use there, but yeah, <laughs> I feel like if you're going to start, operations works. yeah, there was a different word I'm looking for, but operations also works. Uh, so it's like if you're going to start with characters who are sort of midway through their career, I feel that's the kind of vibe I feel like you should be hitting because you want to kind of hammer home that, you know, the PCs are more important than they would be if they were starting at level one. You know, these like mid tier characters, there's more going on. They've done stuff. They're more important. They're obviously more powerful. It's like they can handle more important things like get in there, get crazy. Uh, so, yeah, I, I just think going on that. I mean, I don't know. I, <clears throat> I don't know if you have a slightly different take on this or not, but I feel like the in media res thing is is holds that doubly importance in this particular uh, case. Oh, yeah, no, hard agree. Yeah, like rather than oh, you should go find these nobles. We should be in the graveyard. The graveyard's been cordoned off with like walls of fire, and we're <laughs> immediately in combat. Yeah, yeah, it's like the it's, it, I want the. I bet you're wondering how we got here, kind of thing. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the slow burn like doesn't really it doesn't really make it's just it's not that it doesn't i shouldn't say this it's not that it doesn't make sense it just feels kind of bleh because you want 
your characters to feel important, you know, because they've presumably earned a station of some kind. So they should feel more important. And when you start with kind of a slow burn, they're just not going to feel as important. It, it's just doesn't it's not going to hit the same way. Which is also mm-hmm. why I, I, and this is this is going to sort of segue into another thing. I think and this is not a D&D specific thing. This, I think, applies to any game where you're starting this kind of mid level character. I think if you're going to have characters who who are starting at a mid-level, then you as the GM should establish and enforce a a more strict um, a more strict group dynamic. And what I mean by that is the player characters are higher level. They've done jobs together. You don't... I mean, there is probably... there's some sort of adventure idea out there where the player characters are high level and then meet each other at the beginning of the adventure. There's some scenario where that works, but for the most part, if you're going to have these higher level starting in uh, PCs, you're going to want them to be a, an established team right from the jump. You're going to have a, you're going to assume they've done some stuff already because it just makes sense really. So, mm-hmm. I think you should really take the time if you're the GM who wants to start the game at a higher level, which, by the way, I didn't say this before. I think starting the game, starting if you've played a game a bunch, 5e being a perfect example, if you've played a ton of 5e and you're like, oh, we'll have another campaign idea. But man, oh, man, I don't know those lower level slogs. And like last time we didn't make it to level 20 and I'd like really like to get to level 20 with this campaign. But those lower levels suck ass. I do think you should start a higher start at higher level. I think it's a good idea. If you as a GM have played the game a bunch and you have players who are comfortable. I think there's no reason not to start the game at a higher level, I, especially for 5e, because if you want to play those higher level abilities and characters you know you want to play a level 20 character one of the ways to make it easier to get to that point is to start at higher levels so you're more likely to reach level 20 because going from level 10 to 20 is a much easier ask than going from level 1 to 20 yeah no hard agree it it just (laughs) like you sort of and again like what josh said earlier really this is for experienced parties who've been playing a bunch you get to skip all the like, yes. oh, yeah. well, like I get to do the cool character thing, uh, but I got to get like this level first and then yeah, I, yeah. my build comes together. It's like you get you get to have your build. You get to you have, get to have, have your the cool pre-established shit. dynamic. Yeah. You get your yeah. cool magic items. You get to like you get to the, you get to get to the good part. Right. Yes. Session one. We're fighting a dragon. Basically, that's yeah. the shit that people are looking for. And then again, it's just less pl- planning that the DM has to do because like, oh, well, you're already friends with the king and shit. I don't have to build any of that out. You're just job's done right and and uh, it it's not a good idea for p- players who are totally fresh or in a gm who's totally fresh i just dropped my phone um but yeah if you're all if everyone's experienced and comfortable there's not a lot of benefit to starting at lower level unless you're trying to st- tell a very specific kind of narrative at lower level Sorry, I had to grab my phone. Um, <laughs> and that is that is our scenario right now. We have both a GM and our group of, of four or, or three. Is it three of us? Four of us? There's four of us. I can count. I'm about to say four of us. <laughs> There's four of us. Um, all four of us of players have all played 5e a bunch. Uh, and I think we've all run it. Also, wait. Yeah, we've all played and run the game. So we all know. What the hell we're doing? Has Lita? So, she has, yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So, we're in I a I had to worry about using it. We only, we just call her by her screen name anyway, so I don't have to worry about, like, the double think on that one. <laughs> I, it's not, all right, never mind. We don't do, I'll, I'll talk about this later. Anyway. I, look, it's, it's, it's her screen name no. on my server. That's all that matters. It, it literally you, not. You've felt. explained it already. I know. I know. Okay. <laughs> anyway (laughs) um 
completely broken my train of thought now. God damn it. <laughs> Oof. You son of a bitch. Oh, okay. So, you want to start the game at level 10. And as Isaiah said, like, oh, you already, you already know the king, right? That's good. And you're a party together. Yeah. I think you need to go a little bit, uh, one little step further and really hammer home what the group's dynamic is uh, before before you really get going. And, and what I mean, and I don't mean like, how are their group friends or like, how do they like each other? No, no, no. What is their job? What kind of group are they are? So for, for example, uh, Blades in the Dark as a game specifically says your group of 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 ne'er do wells of scoundrels has been together for a little while and you are an established team of sorts. What kind of g- or gang? Really, I should say gang, uh, not team. <laughs> team sounds too nice. Uh, you're an established gang of sorts. What kind of gang are you? And the game literally forces you. I think you should apply that logic to pretty much any any time you're starting with PCs that are more midway through their career. I think you should apply that logic. So if you think about it in a D&D context, you know, are your characters like a special strike team that the king has employed in other scenarios? Are your characters a bunch of ragtag ass clowns that have gotten the attention of the city because they saved the city from a big threat or because they they got involved in a political situation by accident and now they're they're just a bunch of goons, but now they're goons with a reputation. So everyone notices them. You know, are they do they officially work for the government? Are they like a literal like SWAT team? Are they part of the military? Are they an evil cabal of wizards who are trying to burn the whole thing to the ground? Like, I think it really helps to be more strict and establish what kind of group you're dealing with when you're dealing with mid-level characters. Because, you know, at level one, you know, you're just kind of a bunch of clowns who get together and you do jobs, especially in the D&D context. You know, you're just some goobers who get together. And it's fine to do it that way because it makes sense. You know, the characters aren't super relevant. They're not as powerful. They probably haven't done anything crazy. So it makes sense that they're just some people who have sort of come together. And then you will slowly decide what their dynamic is because not for nothing, but basically every D&D game, the characters start as a bunch of like dude Mick guys. And then you usually end up being some sort of important team, right? The, the critical role thing, like, oh, we're Vox Machina or we're what, uh, the Mighty Nine, right? Like, eventually you get to that point. Or what's their new one? This is an aside. Do you, do you know what the Hell's Bells? Do you know Hell's what their original team name was? The Shits. Yeah, the super high intensity team. Yeah, I kind of mm-hmm. love that. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yes. It's good. I do. I do remember that story. Uh, so yeah, you know, it's pretty common for D&D groups to kind of end up there. So if you're already level 10, you should establish that kind of stuff right from the jump. And this is maybe going to sound bad, but basically don't give your players a choice. Tell them you have to be this kind of a dynamic. You have to be associated with each other in some kind of way and be very firm about that. And I know it's going to sound like you're being bossy, but at the end of the day, it's for their own good. It is of their benefit because then you as a GM can go, okay, I know what kind of team dynamic player characters have. I can now build off of that. You know, a, a perfect example if the players are a military strike team employed by the king, then you can open up with them doing a special military operation, you know, Metal Gear Solid style. And it basically the opening to Metal Gear Solid 3. And you have a strong opener and a good premise to build off of. And obviously, this is not me saying that you should tell your players exactly what their characters are but 
establish what their team is and then let your players fit their characters within to that dynamic. You know, just because the characters are a military squad doesn't mean nobody can play an evil character, right? Like maybe one of the characters is evil, but they keep it secret. Maybe it's a suicide squad situation where they're being like forced to do it. Like there's all sorts of options within that. But establishing that very specific group dynamic early before the campaign gets going, I think will really help you tighten down the screws and bolts. You know, <laughs> I don't know. You you can you can jump in here. I feel like I'm uh, yapping a lot. No, I mean I I so I, I it's it's because I agree, right? Like I, mm-hmm. you know, yes, it does sound mean, but to really enforce to your players, have a theme, <laughs> like much like session zero, where you need to ex- like talk have about vibe. the theme of the game. Yeah. Your characters as a party, if they're already established, need to have a vibe. Yeah, are you thieves? assassins mercenaries monster fuckers like pick one <laughs> um it does remind me hilarious when we started blades in the dark and i was yes. talking to you the whole time i was like oh yeah grant's gonna be like this sick fucking sniper assassin with like a bloodhound who can we can sniff out the targets so grant can stay on like the rooftops and snipe and then our players were like thieves and i just sat there like awesome <laughs> I, I I I put all my stats into shoot and gun. What do <laughs> I do? How steal? No, no, how steal? Only know how <laughs> shoot. Help, please. <laughs> I will say that is one um that is one little bit of a like design issue that Blades in the Dark has to a certain degree, um, where you can have some weird character mismatching with the type of gang you are. But you know, obviously that can be. It can be figured out. It can be solved. But that is a problem that can happen for sure. Yeah. I mean, um, it, to be fair, it, it was solved because our player, our characters consistently tried to do the sneak and then failed miserably. And my character just went <laughs> with handgun. Well, it is what it is. <laughs> true. True. Um, but yeah. And it, the thing is, is it, discussing the that party vibe that that really what it is, is you can avoid that problem. Because it really, you know, the level, like, imagine it like this, if you will. The level one party meets up in the tavern, and one of the players is a lawful stupid paladin who praises Lathander, uh, you know, three times a day. And the other character is a necromancer who wants to turn Lathander into, like, his sex puppet. All right. Ooh. <laughs> that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> <Holy fuck. laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what did I say? I, I just, I, I, I'm not gonna lie. My brain wandered for a second. And I heard something, something. Lethander sex puppet. It was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> that's good. I like that. That's fun. Um, yeah, like the, the monkey with the syllable was just started clapping in the back of my head, and I got yanked back to reality. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's, that's great. Um, so it's like, right, at level one, you know, that's an awkward situation to be like, okay, how does the Lathander Paladin and the Necromancer, uh, you know, deviant, sex deviant, uh, get together as a party at level one. You could be like, well, they don't know much about each other or X, Y, and Z, you know, reason to be around. Sure. Whatever doable at level 10. You're telling me this group of goobers have been hanging around for nine levels. And the issue of the Lathander sex puppet versus the Lathander enjoyer hasn't come up even once, you know, like that's even, that's really awkward. <laughs> How, you know, how do you justify that in a way that makes sense and doesn't feel dumb as hell? So that's why you want to establish what kind of team are you? Because Mr. Mr. Sex Puppet and Mr. Lathander Enjoyer, I don't think would stick around for nine levels, (laughs) you know, without a good reason. Yeah, that's one of those things where it's like, Unless you decide, like, yes, the the I want to turn 
Lathander into my personal gimp. Unless that comes up really, like it hasn't come up yet. Uh, yeah, I don't, uh, <laughs> I, I don't really know how to, how to, how to square that circle. I mean, listen, there's probably, there's some universe where you can make it work if you absolutely have to, but you shouldn't have to because it will be a yeah. better experience if you pre-establish the group dynamic, the type of group you are. It just, it just works out better. Uh, I'm going to be thinking about that joke a lot now. <laughs> and a six, puppet. Uh... So it's like, yeah, and, and it may seem a little bossy if your GM says to you as players, uh, you guys have to establish you are this kind of team. Like, how does that work? You, you know, your, your GM tells you, you know, you are this team or you are that or this is why you're together. It might feel a little bossy and you might be hesitant. You might be resistant, but trick is that you I was I'm resisting the urge to make another sex analogy because I feel like I've been doing that way too much these days um, <laughs> it has become a theme it's become a theme I can't I don't Which know why that's not me <laughs> I yeah I don't know why I keep making these jokes but like <laughs> god damn it taking taking the time like working with your GM like if your GM says your characters are part of this like special military strike team for the king and you operate within those confines, you are going to have a better experience as a group because your GM is going to be able to tailor make things and really come up with some really strong ideas based on that group dynamic. Because if he doesn't, Wow, that was, that was very misogynistic of me to assume he. If they, if the GM, <laughs> could be a could be anybody. If, if, if he, she, they, them, whatever. They, if they don't know what your group dynamic is, they're going to have a lot hard, they're going to have a much harder time prepping things that really work with that group. And then if they have to figure out your group dynamic slowly over time, like it takes them many, many sessions to really nail it down. They're going to have to spend all this mental energy on making that work as opposed to all this mental energy of prepping a cool session idea or prepping a cool mission or whatever. You know, you know what I'm saying? Am I making sense? Yeah, no, I get you. Yes, I have now lost the transition that I had in my brain. <laughs> God damn. This is so scuffed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being, yes, I am, I'm, I'm living scuffed and free right now, uh, is, is how I would put it. Hmm. Uh, I mean, anything you want to add before I, I sh shift? No, I think you're good. Go off, King. You got it. Oh, <laughs> uh, God damn. I was hoping you'd say yes. <laughs> God damn it. Um, so that's that's number one. Another thing that I think is really important is if your players are going to be high level characters and I find it. This, I think, is the weirdest thing for the Vecna Eve of Ruin setup. And tell me if you agree. The fact that the campaign is about fighting and stopping Vecna. And the player characters, as the book explains it, do not immediately know that Vecna is present or that he is a problem from the jump. They, do, they don't know this right away. You have to learn it over time. Is yep. the absolute weirdest choice they could have possibly made. No, it's, it's stupid as fuck. No, it really is. It like, doesn't make any sense. And it's, it's <laughs> weird, too, because it, it, as far as I'm aware... Like, Vecna is, like, a known entity of Faerun. So the weird necromancy shit is going on. I, I feel like characters should just come to that conclusion by the time the campaign starts. Like, oh, like, these, these zombies keep waking up. It's, like, a, a, a nationwide issue. Nationwide is on your side. Um, <laughs> and your characters aren't immediately like, 
Maybe it's the god of liches? Just a thought? I, and then someone's like, no, that's stupid. Why would I that mean, be the case? Like, well, you know, like six months so ago, a demon like sucked a city into in hell. So is that really defense. too crazy? <laughs> uh, Vecna is technically a god from Greyhawk. So you could sort of make the argument that maybe he's not that well known. I get maybe. well so then maybe the interesting thing there would be like oh it's a Sarerac. But like you know uh the idea regardless of how well known Vecna may or may not be the idea that these higher level characters are coming into the campaign scenario and don't know who the villain is from the start it just it just feels awkward because it, at lower level again it kind of makes sense but at higher level it's it's like you should have heard you know if you imagine a campaign starting at level one and going to level 10 the gm will be seeding little hints here and there about the main villain and what he's up to and this and that so the idea that you're starting at level 10 and don't know about the main villain is really weird it feels like again it feels like a level one setup which it, it the, mm. the 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 things just they just it just the idea just doesn't mesh it's just because if you think about it the player characters you start a fresh campaign from level one you're doing a homebrew camp homebrew campaign you as the gm are going to mention and foreshadow some sort of big evil entity throughout that entire one through ten levels because it just makes sense. That's just how stories work, generally. So the idea that the player characters have started out in Eve of Ruin and none of that seeding has happened off screen and the the book just expects you to start totally fresh and then find out about Vecna and go, oh, no, the evil guy. Like, it just feels awkward. <laughs> Like, mm -hmm. I don't know how else to put it, other, like, other than awkward. No, it certainly is awkward. Yeah, so... There's an that, expectation that just sort of doesn't follow through. It's, a, it, it's yeah. a little square peg and round hole. It is, yeah. That's right. It goes in the square hole. <laughs> <laughs> and what do we do with the arch one? That's right. The square hole. <laughs> It's it, it it feels like you know what it feels like the wiz it, <laughs> the Wizards of the Coast employees have a template that they use to start every adventure and they just slap the same template on Eve of Ruin even though that template doesn't really make sense for the setup but they just slapped it on there anyway <laughs> and nobody checked yeah it's it's the meme it's the meme of the superhero with the two buttons and he's just dabbing his head with the claws <laughs> yeah <laughs> right like use the same template we use every time come up with something unique for level 10 characters it's like mm -hmm. yeah so that's the thing that bothers me i think the most uh about the eve of ruin setup in particular so for you for those listening if you want to start a game at higher level for the love of god establish that your char player characters are at least at the at the bare minimum vaguely aware of the existence of the main villain like maybe they haven't interacted with him they haven't seen him maybe they haven't even dealt with any of his lieutenants or anything like that but they should at least be somewhat aware that he's out there and a problem because yeah, I mean, even so ruining a perfect ex none of that <laughs> good yeah well as i say a perfect example is like it <laughs> Uh, bringing it back to last the last time we had an episode it, it's deathwing right deathwing pops out in world of warcraft you know turns an entire country to ashes it's kind of the talk of the town so when the yeah. heroes rock up and they're like hey so we got a problem and you're like okay shot in the dark is it the giant calamity dragon they're like you know it's crazy that you say that yes in fact it is the giant calamity <laughs> it dragon is in Can fact the dragon <laughs> <laughs> right it, it, yeah, yeah, it's like, it, call it, me crazy. Is it the dragon that just turned everything into nothing? <laughs> that just deleted that direction? He's like, yeah, crazy. Yeah, no. <laughs> yes, it is. Please help us. I'll do I'll do you one better. It's the Final Fantasy 14 meme of 
uh, hey, Warrior of Light, something really bad has happened. And the Warrior of Light nods their head and goes, might it be Assians? And then everyone goes, it is, in fact, the Assians. How did you know? <laughs> and then you as the Warrior of Light go, well, there's a trend. I just, I just, it's, 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 good guess. Either Assians or Primals, and we kicked all their asses a while ago, so. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> it's it's literally it, that. It makes me think of the meme to, like, uh, the Warrior of Light tried defeating the Assians with the power of love and kindness. Yeah, that yes. failing, the Warrior of Light chose to defeat the Assians with the power of incredible <laughs> violence. Incredible violence, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it is, yeah, 100%. And, uh, it, it, it just, because... Here's the thing. The idea that the player characters are level 10, so they have to have done some sort of notable things uh, to to be level 10 characters, right? They have to have done something of relevance. That same logic should also apply to the villain, where if the villain's been around for 10 player characters worth of time, homeboy has to have done something. <laughs> like... What is the villain doing otherwise? Sitting there playing with his nuts? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's got to be doing something, or she, or, you know, I'm sorry, I shouldn't assume again. Sorry. <laughs> My guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know. It's like the villain has to be doing something. You know what I mean? Like, it, it just makes sense. It, it doesn't. <laughs> it's like, could you imagine the Game of Thrones characters walk in scene one and they all just look at each other and, like, who the hell are you people? <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's like your characters being level 10 and descent to Avernus and being like, no, oh, sorry, Alice. And the other character's like, oh, I was just waiting for someone to explain it. You know I, was really, yeah, I was really hoping somebody would explain or mention who she is. Everyone keeps saying this name. You're like, yeah, it just, it just doesn't make any damn sense. It's ridiculous. So uh, now this is just turning into us ranting about... Again, we've only played one session, so I like I really shouldn't be getting this fiery. It's just I don't know about you. I'm just a little frustrated that it feels like the adventure opened the same way that every other adventure does. You yeah. know, like you couldn't. I don't know. There's there's so many other way. I mean, even. Even if you just did the simple change of having the adventure start in the first crypt dungeon immediately, even just that little adjustment, you know, because mm -hmm. it just it just frustrates me, which is why I'm saying right now, don't do what Wizards of the Coast did there. Have your player characters relevant, establish what that group team dynamic is. Make sure they know what the villain is doing and what he's up to. And maybe they've even you could even establish that they've encountered the villain already. Like they fought him or they fought a lieutenant or they fought someone, you know, close to him. Establish that they've run into him in some fashion. Them like get all these. <laughs> Why do you keep I don't doing know. that fucking I don't know. correction? You're not going to offend anybody. <laughs> I don't know. My brother know. in Christ, I know it's Pride Month, but it's fine. I promise. Because I said it as a joke the first time, and now it's in my brain, actually, is the problem. Oh my God. <laughs> Listen, I don't want to assume your villain could be a lovely lady. I don't know. It could be the it could be the witch from Narnia. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I think I'm one of the few people on the planet who find her deeply attractive. A lot of people don't. I, I don't get it. When she's the Grandmaster in fucking uh, Doctor Strange, I'm like, gorgeous. Yes, I know she's bald. Gorgeous. Oh, Tilda Swinton, you mean? Yes. I don't yes, know. I know she looks very strange. I just find her very pretty for some reason. Uh, hmm. I don't know. I never really thought about it. She is a strange looking lady, though. That is, she's definitely a strange lady. It's funny. I forgot she played the witch in Narnia. I completely forgot. That's really funny. Yeah, I... <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen the movie, so like I just didn't. I kind of want to watch the first one again. I I I gave nary a shit about the second and third. I they were whatever as fuck, but the first one's really good. I'm sorry. You mean you want to watch the second one again, and you didn't care about the third and fourth one because they just skipped the first movie, first book for some reason. Wait, what? You don't. You didn't know that. 
No. There's an entire... What? The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is book number two. <laughs> Hold on, I have to <clears throat> clear my throat for this. <clears throat> Wait, you didn't know this legitimately? No! <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Lion, the, the Witch... What the fuck? What? The first book in the Narnia series is The Magician's Nephew. They just skipped that whole book. That's what? why... That's why in the fir- in in the the first movie in the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, they talk about events that already happened in a way that like you're supposed to know what the hell they're talking about because there was a whole book worth of information before that. <laughs> That's wild. I had no. I've I did not know that. What like what yeah. information though? Like obviously it's, it's their whole like you know how Narnia got established oh the like do not recite to me the old magics for hour they were there like that yes literally yes that line that aslan says is not a joke he's being legitimate aslan was there when narnia was created because the magician's nephew who, who was the main character and i'm now blanking on his name but uh the old man when they all come out of the the wardrobe at the very end of the movie and the old man's like, oh, they're like, you wouldn't believe us. And he's like, I think I'd believe you. He's the guy who created Narnia or he helped to create it, I should say. Like he literally created it, which is why he knows what they're talking about. And when Aslan says I was there, he was literally there. (laughs) Because Narnia is not really that old as like a dimension, if you will. The only thing I know about the Narnia books is that they get weirdly horny the longer they go on, and then they the do. ending is like a super downer. Correct. Yes, like, don't they like it? Doesn't everyone die in the end or something? Everyone dies or has a shitty life, uh, and the overall ending is just not very good. Yeah, the last book in general was not very good. Yeah, yep. that sucks. What the fuck? Also, the lamp post. You remember the lamp post in the movie that they kept coming back yeah. to? The lamp post is where Narnia started. So, like, Narnia was, like, an abyss of nothingness. It all spawned from that lamppost. Like, the lamppost is the center of the universe. That's why why it was important. That's why they kept coming back to it, and it was just there in the middle of the snow. Because that's literally where Narnia, like, spawned from. (laughs) None of that information is in the movie. None of it. (laughs) Yeah. That is so wild. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. So... Movie one is book two. Movie two is book three, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Huh. They also didn't finish the books in like they didn't. The movies didn't finish. We only I heard got, about, yeah, yeah. We only got up to the Dawn Treader, which is arguably my favorite a book from the series, if I remember correct. Or no, oh no, we got up to the Silver Chair. Uh, I, if I remember correctly, the Dawn Treader was my favorite one. Um, but yeah, we got, it, four, like, th- we got four movies. Narnia There's collapsed in on itself in the end or something. That I don't remember. Maybe don't remember. There's seven Where, books. My... There's only seven. There, there are seven books and only four movies. So, yeah. All right. I'm going to start that with my, my, my handy dandy hour and a half fucking video essay about the Narnia series, I guess. I read I read those books, but it was a, it was a while ago, so I don't remember them 100 percent. But I did read the entire mm. series when I was younger, like in high school or maybe middle school. I think it was middle school. So I still have them, too. Fun fact. Anyway, so strange. <laughs> the huh? Series is so strange. It's so the series it's, is so strange. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit of a weird one. Yeah. Yeah. That was a uh, that that was your Narnia tangent. I don't know. I, <laughs> that was really unprompted. Uh, I don't even know why what what started the tangent. I'm not even gonna lie. Oh, I think you said I said Narnia, something about and then I brought Tilda Swinton being yes. attractive. And yeah, yes. And let me what did I say? What did I say? That's a great. I, I don't, bro. What the hell did I say? <laughs> I, the EXP smoothie is real this episode. Oh my god. Okay. Going back to the topic at hand. Starting a higher level campaign. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have, I have anything? I have no idea what we're going to clip for this, by the way. I just... I, 
I, I, I don't. Don't worry about it. Um, we'll be lucky if a clip comes up next week. I'm gonna be real. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, do you have anything you'd like to add while my ramblings were going on that you thought of? No, Did genuinely, you, I, you I, I'm not even kidding. You just said a lot of the things I was thinking when you told me about what the topic was today. Like nothing. You got nothing else to throw in there. No, no, no spice. I'm no sorry. paprika. Sir. No. Uh, my brother in Christ. All right. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's okay. I was just look. Listen. I was just curious. I was just giving you the room to add it. Basically, this all just spawned from me being frustrated at Wizards of the Coast setting uh, and how they set up Eva Ruin, and me being like, "You should not do it this way." You know, that's that's really the moral here. If there mm-hmm. were to be a moral of the story. But, uh, yeah, you know, it, it's just. Because really, the takeaway should be. If you're going to start a higher level campaign, you can't treat it the same as when you start a lower level one. Like it, it, it just doesn't. It just doesn't make sense. The tone. Excuse me. The tone of lower level characters is not the same tone as higher level characters. And the game literally acknowledges that because the game breaks levels down into tiers of play. And in the DMG, it literally describes the differences between the tiers of play. So starting off Eve of Ruin as if it were just your standard tier one adventure. It's just, it, I just, it's like wizards. It's like wizards doesn't even listen to their own advice. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. No, they why don't, are they, but like they also this? never have, right? Why do, I know. They, why do they have their own proprietary CR system that we don't know, I know about? I know. That's what I mean. Like they keep doing this shit and it, it's just, I don't understand. Like, what I, is the objective? Am I missing something? I'm I no, I, I don't think you I, I like I, I'm trying to be really charitable and nice when I say uh-huh. there are times where I genuinely can't even fathom what's going on in the wizards writing team. What they're yeah, what because the books are becoming yeah. more and more vague yeah. and less and less put together. But they still I, cost as much as everything else. And it's like, oh, yeah, but you're getting like the, sp- the the flashy new art and shit. It's like, yes, but like the the writing is taking a significant dive in its quality. And maybe the reason is, and I'm, tr- and I'm again, I'm trying to be nice. Maybe it's because they realize that a lot of the times GMs just make it up themselves anyway. And they're like, well, you know, we've just learned where to cut the corners. And some of us don't like that. But so like, I, I don't know, because I, I, I it, it is frustrating. Like, I think it's two things. One, I, I don't know if I'd say the writing has taken a dive, but it hasn't evolved in any way. That's for sure. It feels very samey as it did. Early I don't on. know, man. Strixhaven is a dive. I I haven't read Strixhaven myself, so I'm not going to commentate commentate on whether that one's a dive or not. I just don't know enough. But it 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 just. It just feels very samey, very blase. And that's that. Honestly, it feeling samey is just as bad as it getting worse <laughs> in my mind. But I I think what they're trying to do. Is make. I think they're trying to make the writing of the adventures very broad, vague and open ended so that you can slap the various chunks of the adventures onto anything else that you want. It's like they don't expect you. It's almost like they're writing these adventure modules, but they don't expect you to actually run the entire adventure module. They just expect you to run bits and pieces of the module and then like mine it for resources rather than run it straight through. I could see that, but like, my issue with but, that, right, and I've said this before, and I say this a lot with the way, the way Wizards Wizards approaches their writing, which is uh-huh. give us more and let us take away. Don't give us less, right? It's the same thing with art. 
It's easier yes. to make a lot and then strip it away than it is to not have enough and then scramble at the end to add in to make up ends meet. Yes, I, I, I agree. I think that it would be better if they gave us more meaty writing and then let us just take away the bits we don't like. I I think what they're trying to do, honestly, I think why it, it they're doing it the way they're doing it is they're trying to make, make like a happy medium. So, all right. So adventure modules used to be a lot shorter, right? Like modules were modular because they were small, little bite-sized adventures that you could string together, right? And then you would string all those modules together and that was your campaign. But visually and sales wise and just presentation and business wise, these little bite sized adventure module thingies don't really sell the way that Wizards wants them to sell. So what they're doing is they're making, I think I, I should preface this. I think what they're doing is they're making these big adventure books that are very, you know, that are pretty and have nice presentation and nice cover art and X, Y, and Z. And they have like fun magic items in them, yada, yada, yada. They're putting them in this big, thick book because that big, thick book shitting, sh shitting, Ooh. sitting, <laughs> sitting, that big, thick book sitting on the shelf looks a lot more appealing than the flimsy little booklets that they used to make for adventure modules. And shelf appeal is a big thing they're worried about as like a company, you know what I mean? Especially the spine. There's a lot of people I've been seeing recently mention how the spine of the book being bigger so that you can see the whole title across the spine is a big deal in terms of marketing when you're talking about sitting on a game store shelf. Versus a little booklet where you can't, there is no spine. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. they're trying to make these big adventures to look cool and impressive on the shelf, but they're writing them in such a fashion that they're still semi modular. So you can use them any way you want because people want to be able to use stuff in any kind of free form fashion. I think that's what's going on. Now, yeah, I can see that. A lot of people it's have annoying, just said, but "I can see it." Yeah, I agree. It's annoying. Um, a lot of people have pointed out, though. Okay, then just give us the anthology adventures, which is why I think the anthology adventure books sell pretty well. But then, when they make something that's not an anthology adventure, they're still sort of, kind of trying to break it down like it's an anthology book, and I think that's yeah, where it gets fair. really awkward. To be fair, the last anthology adventure we got was Salt Marsh. That did not. No, it was Salt. Radiant Citadel. Oh, it was Radiant Citadel. Okay, yes. To be okay. Yeah. Yes. Never mind. Radiant Citadel was, as far as I'm aware, because I haven't played it or read it, was people liked a lot. I think fair Radiant enough. Citadel sold pretty well. As yeah, I I think. Uh, but well, that was the Critical Role one, right? No, that's Call of the Nether Deep. Oh shit! Maybe I'm thinking of that instead. <laughs> Call of the Nether Deep was different, but Call of the Nether Deep was also like is also technically, I think, third party. It's not actually. I don't know. Is Call of the Nether Deep third part? I'm pretty sure oh. it is official in the same way that um, Explorer's Guide to Wildmount is official. Explorer Guides to Wildmount is not official. Explorer's Guide is third. Is party. Is it officially licensed? No. Well, yes, but it. It, it is officially licensed. It is not a first party book. Uh, yeah. Call of the Nether Deep. I'm not sure. I think no. Okay. D&D Beyond has it under. Yeah. Call of the Nether Deep is still considered partnered content. Yeah. So not mm. first party. Uh, and Call of the Nether Deep wasn't written by Watsy employees. 
So, yeah, that's uh, kind of why people like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Wizards ain't got those W's, basically. Uh, but I, I do think people did like Radiant Citadel a decent amount, though, to my knowledge. So I guess, you know, do with that what you will. I don't know. It's a weird yeah. scenario. I don't really know what they're trying to do. But I do know that adventures keep coming out and people keep complaining about those adventures. That I did. This is this is what I am aware of, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't have a good way to wrap things up here, but uh, don't do what Wizards of the Coast did. That's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, do you have, I mean, do you have any the wrapping up thingies? No, Since I mean, faffing about a little bit. Like, it, I, I'm, I'm sure Matt will do a good job, but I am curious to know at the end of everything how much of it is Matt's finagling and how much of it yeah. is, is raw. Yes, I, I do think we'll have to, um, we'll have to talk to Matt about that and bring it up. <laughs> Because like I said, I, I have every faith that Matt will make it of like, shit, session one, despite like the, the idea, like the premise being kind of unappealing weak. or, you know, uh, not unappealing. Um, it's just weak. It's just not. It's just not yeah. a strong premise. Yeah. I mean, like the session was a great session. It's just. Going to a, a cemetery is like, eh, all right, like, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. 100%. It's funny. I'm trying to word it without feeling like I'm shitting on Matt because it was a very good session. I just. No, yeah, well, that's the thing, right? It's it's it has nothing to do with Matt. It, it, Matt was handed shitty ingredients, and he's cooking up the best meal he can with shitty ingredients. You know, so it's like mm. he can't, you know, unless he's gonna drastically rewrite the entire thing, he can only do so much. And with how weak the premise is, you can. Basically, the premise is weak enough that we, while we were playing it, could feel some of that weird awkwardness within it during the session. So Matt's fighting an uphill battle at the end of the day. And, you know, we'll continue to fight an uphill battle, I imagine. Mm. But he's also used to it, so he'll be fine. Because <laughs> he's doing the same thing with Strixhaven, you know? He's doing the exact same shit. True, but he's also like, I'm so fucking tired of doing this shit for Strixhaven. <laughs> he is a little exhausted with Strixhaven, yes. But, you know, it is what it is, I guess. Like, I don't know. It just That's just kind of how it go. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it, yeah. <laughs> you know? It's like if you want to use the if you want to if you want to use an, an official adventure module in any capacity, at least for the five E th adventure modules, this is the kind of stuff you're going to have to do. I don't know if older adventure mod adventure modules were much more tightly written or were much more precise, were more. Th focused than 5e modules are i really don't i'm not sure but at least with 5e adventure modules if you want to run one you're gonna have to add your own seasoning because they're handing you some very bland chicken and you know <laughs> if you just boil that chicken it's uh it's not gonna be great ain't, ain't nobody want no bland ass boiled chicken you know what i'm saying Oh, you don't you don't love boiled chicken and broccoli for every meal, Josh? I I, I do not, in fact, no. I know. Crazy. I do. So yes, if you're out there and you're like, I want to run a higher level adventure. Focus. Start your characters as important. Decide what they are as a team. Make sure they have done relevant things. Make sure they know more or less that the villain is out there. Even if they don't know exactly what his deal is, they should know he's out there. Be aware of him and start that first session with them already doing something cool and important. 
Make them feel cool and important, because if you're playing a level 10 character, that is how you want to feel. You don't want to have the dirt farmer. And just to be clear, the dirt farmer experience is not even bad. I want the dirt farmer experience sometimes. But if you're playing a game and starting as a mid-level character, you presumably do not want the dirt farmer experience. That's not what you're expecting. So don't. Don't make it the dirt farmer experience with a slightly different coat of paint because that will feel disappointing. Mm-hmm. You know? But yes, I'm not. This is not me saying that starting at level one is inherently always awful or that starting like starting as nobody characters always sucks because it can be fun. There is a thing there. There is there is a type of fun to be had there. But it's all about expectations. It's all about expect. It's always about expectations. We could just get that tattooed on our forehead, to be honest. Yeah, well, starting at level one is fun. Starting at level ten and acting like a level one is not. Yeah, it's 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 awkward and weird. It just feels goofy. All right, that's been us. Let's close it out. If you like the ramblings, if you like the madman ramblings that happened today, you could follow us on Twitter. If you didn't, I don't blame you. That's all I have to say here. Say you. Yeah, I mean, I got, I, I got nothing really. Um, get ready for next week when it's also a massive clusterfuck. <laughs> oh, sick, dude. I, I like that. You know, to we're be set- fair. I- we're setting expectations low. That's good. Well, uh, t- next week I might do it like a, a, a post-op for my session one, just to see how it goes. Okay. Oh, you think about it. Mm. You, you do yourself a thinky. Mayhaps. Mayhaps. Goodbye, internet. Drink your Peace. milk or whatever. Milk? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you weren't ready for that deep cut. Were you? <laughs> Just give him the fucking mark, Josh. <laughs>